Hurricane Ian has made a devastating Category 4 landfall in southwest Florida. Hi, I'm Mike Nasal with continuing coverage of this powerful hurricane. There it is on satellite imagery. As you can see, it moved up and it moved slow, but it has finally come ashore this afternoon in areas there near Captiva Island, right on Cayo Costa, Florida, and then up towards Punta Gorda as a devastating Category 4. When is that landfall? 150 miles per hour, the pressure 940 millibars. Hurricane Charlie 18 years ago made landfall August 13th of 04 directly on the same location with 150 mile an hour winds and 941 millibars. So as of right now, we know that this storm was the exact intensity of Hurricane Charlie, but a little bit stronger and spatially much larger than Hurricane Charlie ever was by seven or eight times the size of Charlie. Here's the latest track from the Hurricane Center and I wanted to give you the latest information up to date is at 26.9 north, 82.0 west and uh, that puts about five miles east of Punta Gorda, Florida. They are just getting slammed. We have had wind gusts well into the hundreds and it's really taking a toll. We've had disastrous storm surge, flooding, damage everywhere from Fort Myers and Naples all the way up. We're getting reports of structural failures in Cape Coral and this is only going to get worse in Punta Gorda and then towards Arcadia and inland. Now we do have a hurricane warning on the east coast of Florida with the expectation that this could maintain hurricane intensity across most of the state. It's weakening now. Winds are down to 140, still a category four. It's like being hit by one train or being hit by two trains. It doesn't make a difference. But it will be weakening as it crosses the state and it should emerge into the Atlantic. And we now have a tropical storm watch along the coastline there of the Carolinas from north of Surf City to Cape Lookout because it's going to be a tropical storm or even a category one hurricane for areas there of Georgia to North Carolina, somewhere on the East Coast. So we're gonna to have to deal with Ian after it leaves Florida. Here's the latest radar imagery and oh boy, look at this. Right over areas there of Charlotte Harbor, Sarasota, you're getting into some of the action, but really Sanibel got hammered earlier. We haven't heard a lot out of Sanibel. We had good video webcams, we had good wind anemometers, all of that's been radio silent. We don't know exactly what's going on there, but it hammered right there, that flow of Category 4 winds and surge, and that is just hammering Sanibel, Fort Myers, areas there near Cape Coral, and I do not want to see the pictures that we're going to see as this storm moves out. There's going to be tremendous damage. Now, what we also had, what a lot of people were showing, was that reverse surge because of the winds coming around the hurricane in the other direction, blowing water out of the bays. It blew it out of Charlotte Harbor. It blew it out of areas of Tampa. But beware, that water can rise very quickly. And I should note, the western side of this hurricane is very intense. So if the east side was as bad as it's been, we still have a lot more to go through. So it's not over by any stretch of the imagination. As of right now, it's just barely inland near Punta Gorda, and it's still a Category 4. What a monster. Took its time moving up, and it definitely has shown a lot of lightning near the eye. We had bad turbulence. The NOAA aircraft Kermit was flying through earlier, and that plane hit a, an updraft, and it just boom, went up and down, and the turbulence was horrible. And uh, those guys really do a lot getting that information for us, and uh, thank goodness for that, because we would have to rely on satellite and radar to estimate intensity, and uh, they got it just in time to figure out the exact strength it was when it came on shore as a Category 4. Storm surge, we're going to have up to 18 feet. That's already occurring. Look at this. Marco Island, underwater. Naples, flooding. Fort Myers, flooding. This is going to be the big thing. This is a wet hurricane. So not only is it a Category 4, which packs the punch with wind, but we're going to have the rain, and it's going to be a lot of it. It's very, very devastating. I did want to show you another vantage point of this satellite. What a beautiful storm. There's that trough that moved off the East Coast, and it picked Ian up, and we didn't know, was it going to leave it behind and kind of go to the panhandle, or was it going to pull it right across Florida? It kind of did a little bit of both. It, moved slowly but it dragged it in to southeast uh, southwest florida rather and that allowed it to become a monster hurricane one of the strongest we've ever seen in the state of florida certainly a new benchmark for southwest florida this is probably going to be almost certainly worse than wilma in 05 worse than irma in 2017 
and quite possibly worse than Hurricane Charlie. It made landfall in the same spot at the same intensity, but the thing we didn't have with Charlie was no storm surge. This thing is flooding like mad, and Charlie was moving 20 miles an hour. This thing's crawling along. So Hurricane Ian is definitely one for the books, and it's not over yet. I'm Mike Nasal with continuing coverage of this disastrous Category 4 landfall, and we have other stuff going on, too. We have a new tropical storm, Julia, out in the Atlantic, but we're not going to focus on that right now, only because our focus is on our friends there in southwest Florida getting devastated by a Category 4 landfall tonight.